this, uh, like to study infinitesimal. infinitesimal properties of the moduli schemes A, B, N. And I recall for you that A, G, B, N is the uh, moduli space of uh, polarized, so it classifies triples A better? Thank you. Now, 
So uh, I'm going to write down some formal definitions, and they are going to be boring. But unfortunately, so one has to do the definitions. So I'll do, uh, uh, for instance, so if I give myself a zero over k is in a beaten variety, and then we'll have, a, uh, we can define a deformation functor, which is, so to speak, the deformations of a zero. And there are two ways to, to define uh, of how to do it, whether defining it arbitrarily or restrict to characteristic zero, a uh, characteristic p. So here, what it does is that if you have an Artanian uh, WK algebra, and then this will attach to it the uh, set, the, uh, the following set, it's the set of uh, isomorphism classes of abelian schemes over R, and plus an isomorphism from A tensored over the residue field. So this is the closed fiber of this abelian scheme. I want to fix an isomorphism of this with uh, the given one, and then modulo isomorphism. So that, that's, the, uh, that's a functor from that category of our Kenyan local algebra to the category of sets. And so it's a small black box that this is representable, which will actually prove modulo another black box. And uh, it's, so it's smooth. And it's isomorphic to the formal spectrum of over the bit vectors in a number of variables. And that number of variables is the relative dimension over the ring of bit vectors. How many variables? The number of variable is g squared, where g is the dimension of this abelian. And then similarly, we can look at a subfunctor of the deformation functor by restricting to the uh, category of Artanian K algebras rather than WK algebras. And this is representable. And it's again, so this follows from the previous statement. Okay. Now, next, I'm going to define Again, so please bear with me. This seems rather, rather formal. And similarly, so uh, the proofs, are not formal. The proofs, yes. Well, not formal. Certainly not formal. But, well, it becomes formal modulo your theorem. <laughs> uh, we can have if we have a polarized abelian variety. So A0 is an abelian variety, and lambda 0 is a polarization on the abelian variety. And then we can define the deformation functor similarly, but carrying a polarization with it. So we'll be thinking about polarized abelian variety, polarized abelian schemes over Artinian local algebras plus so an, a rigidification at the closed fiber. Okay. And, yes? Uh, no, but you, you are, we are, I'm sorry. I think you are, what you are asking, yes, so I'm, this is spec of K and spec of R mod R mod. Maximum idea. Thank you. Oh, spec. Oh, I'm sorry. R module. Thank you. Now, now if 
So following the notation in Francis lecture, if x0 is a p-divisible group, then just as before, we can think about the deprivation functor of an arbitrary p-divisible group. And we can also look at purely characteristic k deformation. And again, modulo black boxes, we'll see that this is isomor this is smooth uh, if it is over the bit vectors. And in how many variables? The number of variables is c times d, where c, d are in the last lecture, where c is, d is the dimension of x0, and c is defined by saying that its sum with d is equal to the height of x0. Okay. And we can have, if we have a polarization, or sometimes some people call quasi-polarization, it's an isogeny from x0 to its dual, then we can consider its deformation, and so on. Okay. They are all representable, but, yeah. but so in general, so they may not be smooth if you have arbitrary polarization, which we will see. Okay. Now, uh, let me keep it here. Now, uh, there are several things I want to do uh, in this lecture. Uh, one is, sorry, these are the uh, mo sort of more boring part. We have uh, got, gotten, them, gotten them out of the way. Now, not clear what to do with this. What should I do with this? Or it's uh, oh, batteries. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. So, so I, I just uh, try. Hidden varieties, and there is a very close relation between these, I mean, there, that's one of the reasons why we are interested in abelian varieties and Barsati Tegu. So one of them is a theorem. The volume down. There are two things in this talk that will be attributed to Sierra and Tate. And the first one I'll, I'll label as uh, Sierra Tate theorem, this is in the notes. And what it says roughly is that deforming a, uh, an abelian variety, uh, let's say A0, is the same as deforming its related, the uh, Barsati Tate group attached to it. So let me try to make the uh, statement precise, i.e., so we have these deformation functors. We have A0 over WK, as before. Now, if we have any deformation of a Vedan variety, that is in a, a, uh, a Vedan scheme over certain Artinian local range, then, and a rigidification at a closed fiber, then we can look at the attached p divisible group. So then, we, if we have a over r, then we can attach to it the p divisible group over r. So what happens then is that we have a, a morph, uh, we have a morphism, a map between from this functor from this deformation functor to the deformation functor of 
this uh, the attached Vasati T group and the CR Tate theorem says that this is an isomorphism. Sorry? Stay away, stay away from this. <laughs> this means the, the right side. So the, the metal part, I see, that, that's what caused the problem. So that's that. Uh, there is another Sarah Tate theorem, which is Sarah Tate. local coordinates. Okay. And this we'll spend uh, some time on. Uh, but before I go into either of these, let me make several remarks. The, rem the first remark Yes, so why are we interested in so all these deformation functors? They looks like a sort of pretty wild bunch. So the reason is, is as follows. So suppose we are thinking about studying infinitesimal properties of the moduli space. Now here, I suppose I have a point, a close point in it. So more precisely, let's say I have, I consider this modular moduli scheme over, the, over WK, and I suppose that I have a point represented by an abelian variety, A0 over K, with a, with a polarization of degree D, and a uh, level, level N structure, and that defines for me a point, a, w, a K point of this modular moduli scheme, and therefore, this being a point, we can consider the formal completion of this point. This is Golden Dick's notation for a formal completion. So this is a this is the formal spectrum of the completion of the local ring of this scheme at x zero. Okay. Now, what is it? If we think about the definition. Uh, the definition, so this I'll leave as an exercise, which I assure you you can do in a few minutes. And that is, what is it? It's the deformation functor that we have talked about over the lead vectors. That's just that. And therefore, if we are interested in studying for infin local infinitesimal properties of this scheme, it's the same as studying these deformation functors. Okay. So that's the first thing. Now the second thing is that what are the uh, inter, oh, by the way, so if you, since we have stated the CRT theorem, and so we can say that this is the, uh, the canonical arrow, this, this, state, this is the same as deforming the p divisible group together with its principal polarization in over the vectors. So, so one reason for studying Brasati, uh, the p divisible groups is that this, they give us a, a very usable way to localize to a method of localization, so to speak when we want to study properties uh, which are infinitesimal. Okay. Okay. So that's that. And of course, another remark is that, so this is related but not that much closely related, is that defo this deformation functor, so there is a map from deforming <coughs> And the beating variety together with the polarization. Now we can, whenever you have such a deformation, you can forget about the uh, 
deformed polarization. And just looking at the underlying deformation of the abelian variety. Okay. And it's a fact that requires um, some, it's, one can say that it's an exercise. It's an exercise, again, modulo some black box to be stated that this is a closing bed. It's not completely obvious. There is a natural arrow, but the fact that this is, this is an embedding is, uh, is I saw this is an exercise. Okay. And there's a similar statement if we replace uh, abelian varieties by Barsati Tay groups. So polarized abelian varieties replaced by polarized abelian, polar, <coughs> polarized p divisible group, and it's the same state. Okay. But that's one. Oh, I should let it stay here. Getting away from the metal. Okay. Do I have anything here? Okay. The second thing, a second remark, is symmetry. Okay. So why do so uh, maybe I should start by looking at the visible local symmetry at this stage. Okay. What do I mean by that? So if I have, let's say, let's say I look at the deformation of a polarized abelian variety, okay. uh, either over the, over K or in mixed characteristic. Okay. So what I, what I mean is that we, at this stage, or here, we have deformation of an abelian variety. Okay. We know that, so, so for instance, we know that this, the bigger one is represented by a smooth formal local scheme. Here, this is smooth if lambda zero is principal. So we, in some sense, we, we think we understand these underlying spaces. These are formal schemes, the formal spectrum of of a formal power series ring. But uh, I would like to say that we don't actually understand them. And the reason is the following. In either of these situations, in general, there is a symmetry group. What's the symmetry group? Let me first say what the symmetry group is. Here we have a natural action of the group of automorphisms of this abelian variety. Why? If you think about the, the definition, I have for every uh, Artinian local algebra R, well, I'm thinking of pairs of the form A, and then this is a spec R, spec R mod MR to uh, a zero phase change to spec R. Okay. Now, what the, the point is that if I have automorphism of A0, then I can compose it and produce another rigidification. So if I have gamma in here, then I, by composing, or as I post composing with gamma, I get another one. So this operates functorially, and therefore what that means is that I have a natural 100% canonical action of this group on um, this deformation space. Okay. How large is such a group? Well, people all, often, we often hear oops, that abelian, the automorphism group of an abelian varieties are finite. That's not correct. So they can be infinite. Now, uh, should I give an example? So, so if I have take A in a beaten variety, I'll take A to be, let's say, G copies of an elliptic curve. Okay? So elliptic curve, by that I mean one dimensional beaten variety. So let me just exhibit lots of automorphisms. Okay? Why? Because now I know that n by n, a g by g matrices, 
with coefficients in z, of course, operates on this product in a natural way. Let's say a zero. Now, what's automorphism? Automorphisms are the group of units of anamorphisms. So this is a morphism of a zero. And what is this? This is your favorite group. And if G is not, not one, this is, I claim that this is a theorem that is infinite. Okay. So we, ha we have this action in general. Okay. Of course, there are some abelian varieties. I mean, th this may, may well be <coughs> plus minus one. But in principle, they can be large. Okay. Now, similarly, we have the group of automorphisms of a zero lambda zero operating on it. Now, this time, it's correct to say that this automorphism group is finite. And that's something you can read in standard books. For instance, Mumford's group on the beta variety. But this is a finite group. On the other hand, just knowing that this is a finite group doesn't mean that this action is trivial. And I'll invite you to, to do as an exercise uh, to figure out what happens. So if you have a non-trivial finite group of, auto, of automorphisms, what the action would be. It's not easy. Now, but I say, I'll, the next remark I'm going to make is that in fact, so these are just, the group looks not too big. This looks discrete. But in fact, it's a lot bigger. There's a, a lot bigger group of automorphisms operating. It's just that so in this way, we don't see it. Okay. Now, how do we see a bigger automorphism group acting on these moduli space, on these local deformation spaces? Well, we remember, for instance, this is canonically isomorphic via this arrow, this direction, to the deformation functor of depolarized p divisible formal group attached to this polarized, oh sorry, here this is no, no polarization. They're the same. But after we realize this way, then we see that there is an action by not just the group of automorphisms of this obedient variety, but rather by the same formal argument, the autom group of automorphisms of the p divisible group attached to it. Now, how large is this? So let's assume that k is the algebraic closure of it. Now, how large is it? Well, let's say, uh, let's even look at, so I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, maybe I should go over here. Now suppose, let's say, in a simpler situation, even the simplest situation. Now, yeah, I'll we'll talk about, so simplest, by that I mean the case when the dimension of the beaten variety is one. Okay. It's hard to be simpler than that. Now, as you heard that in Francis' talk that not all one-dimensional abelian varieties in characteristic P are the same. Infinitesimally, they look different. This is one of the features uh, of geometry in characteristic P. So let's do some examples. So the one example, I'll start with the harder one. So A0, and suppose that it's super singular. So A, I'd say E0, so the dimension is one. So I change from A to E, so elliptic curve. We haven't defined it so far, we will, more generally, but so at this stage, it just means that it's not ordinary. Well, ordinary was defined in Francis' lecture. So not, not ordinary. Now, again, here I'll tell you a fact which we'll do uh, tomorrow. 
So in this case, what is the group of automorphisms, maybe I'll start with endomorphisms, of the Borsatite group? Easier. Of the p-divisible group attached to it. This is a fact we will do. So it's a small black box. That this is a uh, quaternion Central of quaternion central division algebra over QP. And there is up to isomorphism, there is only one such. So it's dimension. F I'm sorry, this is not the quaternion, it's maximal order. V, maximal order in A, V central div quaternion division algebra over it. Okay. And so now automorphism group, so I call this O of D, where D is this div division algebra, so that the automorphism group is just the group of units of this maximal order. It's quite a large group. It's a p added group. And so we know that the deformation functor of E0, which is the same, WK is the same as the deformation functor of its Borsati Tay group, P divisible group. And we have this pretty large P divisible. This is a, uh, what is this? This is a compact. P-adic group, what's its dimension? Well, since the tangent space is the underlying vector space of that, so dimension of that P-adic group is four. It's a four-dimensional group operating on it. Now, so I, this in fact, it's not the hardest case. But I claim that, well, certainly I don't really understand this action at all. I don't. Now, so if anyone's interested, uh, this, this is something, some exercise one can sort of play with for at least a whole day. Now, in the contrary, the case A, the easier case if that is A is ordinary. Okay. So here it's a, I'll take this opportunity to supplement, so the last lecture, with two more definitions of ordinary abelian varieties over a field of characteristic P. So more so aside, A0 over K is ordinary. We saw several definitions a set of properties that characterizes this. And there is an equivalent definition. There are many more uh, that one can use, but I use one that's strong, which says that if we look at its p divisible group attached to it, then first of all, there is a maximal etat quotient. So I could, uh, I'll say E, so this is etat. Uh, let, let me write it this way. So, so K is algebraically closed. And characteristic zero, so I say this is constant. That's easier. And here, this is the uh, P divisible group attached to a torus. So, and then so how many copies? G copies, G being the dimension, and this is uh, of height equals G. So in other words, so here I'm saying that there is an equivalent definition of ordinary abelian varieties. Sorry? Height, height of E. I'm sorry. 
So th this is one definition of that. Okay. Uh, because we'll uh, need that later. Now, in this case, uh, quite in contrary to the previous situation, I'll say I claim that this is, in this situation, we can completely understand the action of this, log this automorphism group on the deformation space. Yeah. And so the general statement, this is a special case of the CRT local coordinates for ordinary abelian variety. Okay. Let me first tell you so what happens in this situation. So in this situation, so the deformation of E over the bit vectors is, as we said, that so with K, this little K over there, the deformation of E P infinity over W K. So I'm stating some fact, which I try to indicate how to prove. So this is isomorphic to a one-dimensional formal torus over the bit vector. Okay, so that's easy enough. Now, second, what is the automorphism group of this Barsati table of this p divisible group? What's the shape of it? This being over, this being over a perfect field, but in fact algebraically closed field, one can check that this uh, short exact sequence actually has a canonical splitting. So it's a product. Okay. Now there is no non-trivial homomorphism in between mu and constant ones. So if you grant that, then the autom the uh, endomorphisms of a product is the endomorphism of the connected of the mu and the endomorphism of this constant. Okay? Now each one has dimension one, oh sorry, it has height one. It's, now this I can, uh, let's see, yeah, okay, here. So I can say this is an exercise, this is something after what I said, this can be done. It's a co copy, so it's two copies of this. ZP cross ZP, right? Now, the next question is, what's the action? So we know that there is an action of this p adic group. This is a compact p adic group. We think we understand this group. It's that the uh, local units. We also understand this group. That's the formal torus. To have an action means that we have a homomorphism from this group to the group of automorphisms of this formal torus. What is the group of automorphism of this formal torus over the bit vectors? That, again, I'll leave to you as an exercise, and that is canonically isomorphic to ZP cross. In other words, the aut automorphism you can have is raising to some power. The power has to be a p-adic unit. And otherwise, it's not an automorphism. So we have, we know that we have a natural map, we have homomorphism from ZP, for two copies of ZP cross to ZP cross. And I'll, so I'll, I'll state a theorem, a state a fact which uh, we should be able to deduce from the CRT local coordinates. You know, what is it? What's the map from here to here? Well, if you have lambda one, lambda two, it depends on sort of the, the ordering with this isomorphism. But what this map is, is that this goes to lambda one inverse lambda two. That's this, that's this map. K is an algebraically closed field. So that we have to give the automorphism is maximized. Well, but in fact, you, you have this, this whenever you have a perfect field because you, it, the automorphism is defined already over a perfect field. So we have this. So this is a general phenomenon that we can, if in the case, yeah, yeah, that's that. In the case that we have the abelian variety is ordinary or the, the p-divisible group is ordinary, we can completely understand the action of the uh, local automorphism group by 
And the action is, in, in a strict sense, linearized. It's completely linearized so that we can understand them by linear algebra. Hurry. <laughs> oh, but I should, there's another remark, it's a crucial remark that I would like to make here, that the, you know, these, for some reason, or these automorphisms, these actions, were not emphasized in the literature, perhaps because people didn't look at them carefully. Uh, although, in, uh, in, in a paper by Lubin and Tate, they actually did it in a special case. Now, for uh, this, these lectures, there's a, there's a genuine reason that we are interested in these automorphisms. And the reason is this. So, we have, so one of the things we study in these talks is Hecke orbits. But in fact, so if we think about this, so the real object, real objective is not understanding these orbits. Every orbit, so a priori is a finite set. The Hecke orbit is really, so it's sort of the one that we really are interested in is to study, it is the study of Hecke symmetry. So for instance, on AG, uh, let's say one F. Okay. And I think in Henri Damon's lecture, so you have all heard that so at least when G, in the case that G equals one, so the modular curve has lots of algebraic correspondences on it. They're called Hecke correspondences. And similarly here. So there, there is a large automorphism, or not, not automorphism, but Hecke corris algebraic correspondences. So this is one of the uh, standard phenomena. If you haven't seen it before, the f if this is the first time you see it, it, it sounds like magic. What happens is that if you vary the n, then you get a tower of modular varieties as you, as you vary n. And so the maps are Galois covers. So a priori, you get a, so you get a group, which is a Galois group of these covers, operating on this tower. The Galois groups are, pro, are profinite groups. In particular, they are compact. But in fact, there is a much larger group operating on it, which is the symplectic group, but values, with values in finite adels, prime to p finite adels. So this is the notion for prime to p finite adels, which is, if you can, if you like, this is a restricted product of QL, so L not equal to P. And so the, the, this group action, so when reflected at a finite level, becomes the Hecke correspondences. So, th th we, so one of the objectives is to study these global symmetries. Okay. Now, so in mathematics, when we always try to sort of use calculus, try to reduce everything to calculus in some sense. So in other words, we would like to localize and try to localize, so whenever we can, to study sort of these symmetries. And we localize, when we localize these lo the symmetries, they actually becomes, well, in a, in a certain sense, not all of it, but this action of the automorphism group of A0 lambda 0, P infinity, on the deformation space. So that's, that, that's the real reason that we are interested in. And so what I was saying was that still in the case of ordinary situation, we can completely understand it. We can completely understand the action. And in some sense, although I'm not formulating it as a mathematical theorem, that so the ordinary the case that the abelian variety is ordinary is the only case that we can comp that this action can be completely understood by linear algebra. Now, uh, so I have a little over 15 minutes to explain the rest. So the first thing I would like to say, I think I have already stated the, uh, the, uh, 
see a Tate theorem as a black box. But fortunately for me, uh, in, I think in tomorrow's lecture by uh, Professor Messing, he will explain how to prove this theorem. Okay. And I will, since I'm running out of time, I will only say very briefly uh, about the technique used in, uh, in the proof. And by the way, so I think the first published proof of the theorem appeared in Bill Messing's thesis. So, so the uh, so tool, so remarks about tools. Tools for studying uh, these deformation spaces. And what that is, is the Grotten Dick messing. So that's one the general method, the Grotten Dick messing method of attaching sort of crystals attached to uh, p divisible groups. Okay. And uh, the more precise statements are in the notes, although they're about, so let me say, so you have input data is what's called so PD structure, so divided power structure, you can see the notes for precise definition. What that means, roughly speaking, is that for, for I is an ideal, R is a ring in which P is locally nilpotent, and then we have lots of maps called gamma I's, and these are, in some sense, gamma I's are intended to be so raising x to x to the n over i to the n factorial, but this x to the i, and, and trying to reduce a set of properties to make sense out of it, and we want it to be nilpotent, that in the sense that for every x in i, so some power, so then so if your i is large enough, then it becomes zero. This is slightly different and more general than what I wrote in the notes. And f f whenever we have these, and we have uh, p divisible group x0 over r mod i, then you have miracles, almost if you, if you haven't seen it before, it's like magic. So what, what this means, among other things, is that you have, in some sense, a crystalline first cohomology group and so it, in the notes, I wrote some D, it's a dildonate crystal. But some, it's some, in some sense, it's x0, but evaluated over r. So without actually having to lift these, these p divisible group, you already have a linear algebra data that's there. But moreover, you have h1 over this, h1, x0 over r mod i, which happens to be canonically isomorphic to h1 of x0 r reduced mod i. Over here, there is a Hodge filtration. And then the theorem, which you can read the uh, details in the notes, says that lifting Oh, when, whenever we have such an input data. And if we try to lift a, a P divisible group over, defined over R mod I, lifting from here to R is the same as lifting this Hodge filtration. So in that sense, whenever you have such an input data, a neopotent, uh, divided power structure on this extension. You can, you can understand at least one step. In one st uh, so when you only try to deform it one step out by linear algebra. Okay. And one, I should say, what makes it good for, at least for standard deformation theory, is that when I squared is zero, when I squared is zero, then we can have a trivial p 
PD structure, or BP structure. So, but I square, so how, do, how does one do it? Is that for all the gamma i's, for i bigger than or equal to two, you just define them to be zero. And when, if i square is zero, that's a well-defined divided power structure, and that's, but i square equals zero is the standard form, is in, so quote unquote, standard deformation theory. That's sort, so to speak, the standard deformation, standard input data, therefore, if we are only interested in deforming over square zero extensions, we can completely understand all, everything by linear algebra. Okay. And with these, and uh, with, if you look at the notes for the precise statements, it's possible, so you can, to deduce the uh, smoothness and representability of the deformation functors as exercises. That's a uh, pretty big black box, which uh, I'm sure you will hear more uh, in today's and tomorrow's lecture by Bill Messi. Okay. So now I have about 10 minutes to do the CRT local coordinates. Let me try to do that. hope to be able to prove something. Uh, so, let me first uh, tell you the precise statement of the CRT local coordinates. So here, Suppose that x0 is a uh, ordinary uh, p divisible group. But let me just, for simplicity, I'll just do it over an algebraically closed field. Of characteristic p. What that means is that I have a canonical I have, so for every group, every Poisson decay group, there is a maximal eta quotient, a over algebraically closed field, eta means constant. Okay. And how many copies are there? There are, uh, this is C. So the number of copies, and then there are B copies. Of it. So canonically, I will say that this is the maximal eta quotient, and this is the maximal multiplicative part of the Borsati table. Now, if we look at the deformation space, so, so, yeah. So if you have any deformation over R. Uh, it's a fact which one can do by using the fact, so this is usually called rigidity, which means nothing but that when you deform an a tau thing, uh, or lifting an a tau thing, then you can, you have, for instance, if you have an a tau group scheme, or a tau, uh, a p divisible group, and then you can just lift it whenever you have an atolic, uh, yeah, whenever you have a neopotent extension, there's a unique limit. So whenever you have a lifting or deformation of x, x zero, then again, we have this so defined over R. So this is base change to R. And here we have mu p to infinity over R. We have this. So in other words, so this is given. So whenever you deform it, it's given. You have this natural exact sequence. Okay. So, so in order to determine this deformation, the only data that encodes it is how, these, how this p divisible group over R is fitted together 
uh, by uh, from uh, from this constant one by this multiplicative one. So in other so the theorem says so let me theorem this theorem k coordinates theorem k coordinates. So suppose so the assumption says before. So if we take the deformations of x zero, let's say over arbitrary thing, we would like to understand it. And the theorem says that we have a canonical isomorphism from, let's say, let me say TP of x eight tall, zero eight tall. So it's this thing. And go into uh, what I'll say, x zero hat. So this is the formal group attached to this. So in some sense, you're taking the formal completion of this Barsabi take group. So this, I remind you in this situation, this is QP mod ZP, and this is GM, so this is C copies, and this is hat, GM hat D copies. Okay. And this is the Schiffy by the Holmes over ZP. Okay. And what this is, is that this is just a canonical way of writing that this is isomorphic to a number of of the formal torus, how many copies? It's the rank, the product of these two, because each one, uh, so this can be deciphered by, yeah, this is obvious. So this is the statement. Sorry? TP is the Tate module attached to this A top Barsati Tate group. So A top Barsati Tate group can be understood, uh, let's say, by the Gallo action. Since we are sort of thinking about over an algebraically closed field, the Gallo action is trivial. So there's nothing. Okay. So uh, in, I, I try, my intention is to try to at least indicate a proof to you in three minutes. Okay. Now, so, so the general formal, general way of proving such a statement is that once, once you have this canonical isomorphism you have a, we have a canonical map. There is a canonical map over here. So once you have a canonical map, you only have to check that this is an isomorphism. And because this is a canonical map, and there are, there are low, there are, these are product structures, so you can easily reduce it. So th this thing by standard algebra, you can reduce, you reduce it to the case that C is one and D is one. So the proof is, Extend, oops, uh, plus uh, reduction, it suffices to show to prove this in the case that C is D equals one. Okay. And then X zero is mu P infinity plus Q P minus E. That's the only one you, one has to consider. And so as we explained, so if we over, we are over R, R is an Artinian, Artinian local algebra over the bit vectors. So we need to compute the ways we can extend, we can, the isomorphism classes of extensions. But extension has, <coughs> has to reduce to the given one. Oh, so what's the isomorphism classes of all extensions? First, forget about the condition that we will reduce the closed fiber is the given one. Well, that is, we'll just look at extension. New P infinity. Now this, by an easy argument, you can convince yourself that this is the limit of extensions, if I look at this Poisson Dite group, or this P divisible group, I can, so each time I can look at what happens if I just look at its P to the N kernel. If I look at its P to the N kernel, we again we see that it's an extension, 
what it is an extension of, it's an extension of n, oh, sorry, p to the minus n z over z by mu p to the n. And this is over r. Right? Now how do we compute this? This can be easily computed by Coomer theory. How do we do that? I recall for you what, what Coomer theory is. Coomer theory is dn zero or one to mu p to the n. One, this is p to the n. And so we do that, and when the, what Coomer theory tells us is that this is isomorphic to uh, R cross divided by R cross raised to the power P to the N. That's the standard Coomer theory, just using exact sequence from it. Okay. Now there's a slight difference of this, now we are using the fact that the base, the residue field is perfect. That being perfect, this quotient is canonically iso, and then take the limit as n goes to infinity. Now on the individual level, that is, I claim that this is isomorphic to using the similar quotient but with principal units. Because when you, when you look at the, the map going to K, so raising to P to the N is surjective. So this is because perfect. Okay. Now we take this, so you have to convince ourselves how to how to take the limit as n goes to infinity. And so you think about what, what that means. You see that this is just 1 plus n to the r. Because this is Artinian, so when you take, and p is less. So now at, lastly, so I think I, I apologize for going over for maybe uh, two minutes more, I but I would like to state a theorem. Uh, let me go over this. Which, at this stage, looks rather unmotivated. But uh, it'll be an ingredient we need later, and this seems to be the best time to state this theorem. Okay. But innocuously, this is a very elementary theorem elementary in both the statement and the proof. So let's say, so I'll say that x is a formal torus over, say, algebraically closed field, characteristic p. So this is, what that means is that it's isomorphic to some copies. Now, I suppose that I have a reductive group. Reductive. So this is stated in, this is written down in notes, reductive group over QP. Okay. And I have, in this case, a homomorphism from this to GL, GL, I have capital N, uh, QP. Okay. So I have an open, subgroup that goes to GLN of ZP. And therefore, it operates on X. So this actually, this is sort of uh, GL of X, so X star, X lower star tensor with QP. So we have an action of U on the formal torus. And so this is a representation. And assume that rho contains uh, no uh, 
trivial representation uh, subquotient. This is a reductive algebraic group, so it, it, it decomposes into direct sum of irreducible representations. I'm assuming that not, none of them is trivial. So, uh, and then suppose I have a closed irreducible sub variety uh, uh, operating uh, containing this formal torus X. And assume that it's stable under the action of U. So I remark that such things are very easy. So there are lots of examples. The simplest one, perhaps, is to take G to be GN, GL1. And then, so this, well, then here you take it to be some, some open, sub, or some subgroup of principal units in ZP or ZP cross, and operates by homogeneity. That satisfies this condition. So, and stable under U, what's the conclusion? The conclusion is that Z is a formal subtorus. And okay. uh, why did I, why is anyone interested in this? That's because when one localize the uh, Hecker orbit problem, so this becomes the corresponding localized problem. And such localized, so local information will tell us a lot about global information. Thank you, Asaki.